what's up? This is Odulena from Odulena Digital. Welcome to my channel. Every Sunday I post a new video. Now I'm back from holidays and I'm going to do my usual schedule. Every Sunday there is a new video here. I'm talking about my favorite books, about politics and history, about advertising and social media as well as I work for Google and advertising is my profession. Uh, welcome to the channel and be sure to subscribe those of you who are new here I can see that a lot of people subscribing over the holidays Please explore the rest of the channel There is a lot of interesting content and I promise I'm back to my schedule So I'll be sharing a new video every single week this week I'm going back to book reviews So I'm going to talk about one very interesting book called riveted uh, the science of why jokes make us laugh, movies make us cry, and religion make us feel one with the universe. Uh, the book is by uh, Jim Davis, who is a professor in cognitive science, and the book is uh, pretty much uh, about the, let's say, the, the history of our brains and why certain stories, certain ways of expression, certain a certain uh, ways of presenting things are making us riveted or making us paying attention. So the book is exceptionally relevant nowadays and I'm going to tie these uh, methods to some of the ways how media and uh, social media and let's say television nowadays is portraying the current events as we know uh, 2021 started in a very chaotic way uh, the last year has been also full of a lot of different events a lot of different opinions and uh, we can see how actually media is using these methods to make us pay attention and the way of uh, using this book is also for you to understand how not to be manipulated and how to make sure you understand when they are trying something on your brain and they're using this kind of uh, thousands of years old heuristics and uh, principles that you respond to so rule number one is that we are wired to be social there is another book about why are we social uh, which i really recommend you to read and this is about why actually we as human beings we are always interested in other human beings and we are almost unlikely to pay attention to a story which does not involve human emotions human beings even when you look at animations and animated characters of animals or objects they always have a human a human part to them we otherwise it's almost impossible for us to tell a story a compelling story about an object without giving it some kind of a human form or even uh, talking about spiritual beings or gods uh, when you look at ancient mythology uh, these are all uh, given human traits so that we can understand the story and we can pay attention to it if you look at 90 percent of literature visual art it's all human faces human bodies human stories uh, otherwise it just doesn't make sense for us here is also another very important part is that we like a lot hearing about others gossiping understanding what's what's happening trying to find the moral how, trying to find how this is applicable to my life in a way learning from experience because we are social beings and here you can see also the power of telling a good story every news uh, great news reporter every politician every great speaker is a storyteller and here is something important to understand if someone is a good storyteller that doesn't mean that they are right it means that they are able to make us pay attention they are able to make out of the random facts a good story maybe they have good language skills as well that's why we tend to believe more to uh, native speakers rather than to uh, foreigners so for example i have an accent and i can feel sometimes limitations of my language so when you look at someone who is speaking very smoothly who is a smooth talker talks very well kind of the story makes perfect sense and when you uh, hear them making the facts together into a one compelling beautiful concise story always pay attention that this might be also a way of manipulating you because we are very good in listening to stories we tend to believe that stories are true especially they're about people especially if they make sense as a logical story especially if they are combining 
the seemingly irrational uh, separated events into one big story. This is why conspiracy theories are making so much uh, fans and followers is because people are seeing them as a way of telling a story, as a way of understanding what's happening and as a way of, uh, let's say, paying attention to, to a story, paying attention to, to an idea. So making sure that you understand whenever you hear a good story, pay attention, this might be a manipulation. Then another one, very important one, the wizard's first rule is that we pay attention to things that make us frightened. So fear is a very, very strong and powerful uh, emotion in us. And then we pay also a lot of attention to stories that give us hope. So fear and hope, and you can see this in the media, especially uh, over the last year with the development of the pandemic, you can see how much fear that has been going into the news. Uh, when you look into the news, all the abnormal stories, all the scariest stuff, all the worst things that could happen, the worst scenarios were predominantly exposed everywhere. So you could see fear, 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 fear. Why? Because people pay attention to fearful stories. Nobody is going to look at news about, well, things are not as bad as they look and uh, things are going to be fine. Let's be logical about it. No, people pay attention to frightening things, to scary things. Uh, and then there is the hope element. The hope, uh, and it's always, you can see in the news, uh, fear is always juxtaposed with hope. Now there's the fear, 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 fear from the virus and then talks about the vaccine. Oh, there is a hope, there is a hope, there is a hope. And you can see this with politicians as well. There is the fear of the evil politician and the hope of the good one. Uh, it's always this kind of, when you people start talking about hope and when they're trying to frighten you, be very, very careful because this is a way of manipulating some of the most powerful emotions in human mind. We are just incapable of not paying attention to scary things. It's almost impossible for us to be unscared once we are scared from something. And it's also very, very powerful for us to hear about hope. And um, this is also paying, making us pay a lot of attention. Then there's a few other ones which are very interesting. It's about the, the pleasure that we find in patterns, discovering patterns. And this is, of course, in visual patterns. You can see uh, in design, visual patterns are always pleasing the eye. And you can see it from centuries and centuries ago. Uh, the design of, of patterns, of discovering patterns is interesting. That, but we also like discovering patterns in stories. and in explanations. Uh, that's why, for example, most religions believe that anything, any injustice that's happening in the world is a form of punishment, because then it makes sense. There is a pattern. Then you did something bad, something bad happens to you. There is a punishment. There is a cause and there is a reaction to the cause. So if you look at explanations like this, where you have a very easy pattern to find or where you, uh, especially in conspiracy theories, uh, these are ways of, let's say, someone found the pattern, someone found what's going on, the secret story, the secret line that's connecting all these unexplicable otherwise facts. Uh, be very, very careful because these are also releasing dopamine in our brain. So these are also used widely for people to make you believe certain things. Uh, of course, there are patterns which are, which are fun to discover, let's say puzzles and games and artworks. Uh, and uh, of course, designers and visual artists use patterns a lot. Uh, and it is a good thing. It can make you uh, release dopamine. It makes you your it's eye pleasing. You can see it in fashion. You can see it in design, uh, but also pay attention to it because patterns like easily findable patterns. It's like a puzzle that's left there for you so that you can catch on the trace and you can discover what's the pattern and then it becomes compelling to you. So once you discover the pattern, it's very difficult for you to unpattern it to to believe that this is actually there is not no cause and no reaction interestingly uh, people with schizophrenia they tend to have naturally higher levels of dopamine and uh, people with schizophrenia tend to see cause and reaction in pretty much everything this is why it's very difficult for them to function because they constantly feel that things are connected even like kind of see patterns behind everything 
this is kind of like the magical thinking there where you feel that they are the the trees are talking and the forests are alive and the buildings and everything it's it's on the border of craziness uh, so levels of dopamine and people with naturally higher levels of dopamine even if they're not schizophrenic they can be perfectly sane they tend to see more patterns they tend to see more stories they tend to see uh, and try to make connections between seemingly unconnected facts. And finally, he talks about religion. And this is a very interesting part of the book. He talks about why actually humans have the necessity of religion. Because if you look all around the world for thousands of years, every single culture has had some form of religion. We are actually in the first moment from history now when they are atheists, that there are people who believe that there is no religion and don't uh, confront to any religion. And some may argue that atheism is a religion by itself. And certain movements within our society, even though that they, uh, let's say, are, we cannot qualify them as a religion, they do have the qualities of religions. They have the following, they have the rituals, they have the connection, and even they have the, their holy matrers and uh, their holy uh, people. Uh, we can, when you look at, um, let's say, famous uh, people, uh, let's say, cult stores, celebrities, they are, they have the traits of religion. So, what makes human mind being so obsessed and so uh, seeking to find this kind of, this kind of performance of religion? And he argues that this is not something so easy to explain as uh, what we used to say in the past that. Uh, religions are just ways of explaining the ex unexplainable, explaining why are we here, who are we, and who created us. Um, there is more towards it. Of course, there are the myths and the legends. This is another, another thing. But the religion by itself, as you can see that there are some Christians who don't believe in every single fact from the Bible. Um, let's say they do believe in evolution, but they can still be Christians. They, they select maybe certain more spiritual parts of, of the religion, not the whole explanation of the world creation, for example, in Christianity or in any other re religion. You can still uh, have like some scientific knowledge that there, there was the evolution, there was the Big Bang, uh, but there is something more towards it. And this is the spirituality. So why do prayer uh, make us feel good? Why does um, religion make us feel as one of the universe? And he talks that sometimes being a little bit irrational in what in the scientific sense is that to say believing in, in God according to science is a little bit irrational. Uh, but uh, what he believes is that sometimes irrationality is bringing the best out of us. Not always, but let's say some levels of irrational uh, thinking can bring uh, higher performance. He gives an example with sports. There was a study of swimmers that the ones who were more religious and believed in God uh, performed better than the ones who were perfectly honest about themselves and don't believe that any, there was any superior power supporting them. So sometimes belief can make people perform and do things much, much stronger than, than non-believing. Uh, and uh, interestingly, yeah, religion is, is opening, let's say, qualities that we are not otherwise able to access. And sometimes being overly too, too rational and unbelieving in anything can make us terribly pessimistic and even depressed. There were studies of people who have zero belief in anything uh, apart from science, then they can be uh, severely depressed over time. So it's an interesting fact that somehow human brain needs and feels better, uh, performs better when it believes in superior powers, which the religions are giving us. So this is all from me for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to this channel and I'll be back with a new video next week.